various forms of tracking. So measuring and tracking, there are so many different ways in which you can do it. It doesn't have to be with a scale, uh, contrary to popular belief. And we're about to dive into some of the different ways in which you can measure and track your intake. That way you can find one that you enjoy and it doesn't feel like a chore. Yeah, because the reality is you're always measuring to some degree, right? Whether that's, you know, with your eyeballs, you're at Thanksgiving and you're like, oh, this looks like a good serving. Um, or you're uh, out and about and you're like, okay, like I'm going to just like eat this amount or you're not even paying attention to how much you're eating. Like or there you right. are, your, your stomach's gauging how much you're eating, right? Yeah. Or you're like, oh, the number three at McDonald's is the perfect amount of food. There right? you go. <laughs> every, every Tuesday or whatever it yeah. is. But the biggest difference when it comes to all of this is the level of precision. So like how precise are you being in the way that you are measuring and tracking? And so we've talked about this briefly before, the pyramid of precision. Now, if we're to take a look at this pyramid, it starts with the foundation. And as we always preach, the foundation is key. And the foundation here is honesty awareness and sustainability. And so as he mentioned in the beginning of this, like finding something that um, something that is sustainable and enjoyable for you at your phase of life. All of these different um, levels are going to be dependent on your skill set, your goals, the sustainability for you and your life with the most accurate or the most precise um, way of measuring and tracking being grams, which is at the top. And of course, each level has a time and a place in your life. Like it, it changes because guess what? Life changes. You change, right? Yep. So when you're crazy with uh, working kids or life, maybe it's not everything to the gram. Uh, and sometimes maybe when you have a little more time, it is. And maybe uh, you're a beast and life is hectic and you still do everything to the gram. Like who knows? But uh, what works for you at one point of your life may not be the right answer at other points uh, in your life. And I know that that's something that uh, causes a lot of people frustration is like, oh, they take a look at uh, one time in their life when they were, you know, just nailing it, super successful with everything, and they try to go back to doing everything the way they were at that time in their life. But other variables have changed, and it may not be the right answer for the problem that they're facing. And this, this also is dependent on, you know, like when you don't have a scale, what do you do? Yep. This is this is a very common thing, and I wouldn't call it a problem, but it's something like. You go over to a friend's house and you don't want to bring your scale. You go out to a restaurant and you don't want to bring your scale. So how the heck do you measure and track the foods that you're going to eat? And that's what we're going to cover in here. So with the first foundation, honesty, awareness, and sustainability, be consistent with anything that you do. So like very similar to when, you know, you're measuring vegetables, you always measure, you know, asparagus or whatever it is the same way. Um, or at least you pick the entry, uh, if it's always a cooked entry, if it's always a raw entry, whatever it is, you want to be as consistent as possible um, with the way that you measure and track that. Doesn't mean that you can't adapt and change, but totally. when you try a new way and do your best to stick with it, because sometimes I think people can be a little bit legalistic. It's like, oh, well, I, this is how I used to do it. Maybe that doesn't work right now. Yeah. So, uh, you know, as as you get more skilled or life changes, figure out what's the best thing to be consistent with at the moment. Totally. And then of course the the next piece of the puzzle is being honest and aware. So like awareness is massive because how many times have you gone out to gone to Costco and you eat those little um bites from the Costco sample lady or you nibble off your kids plate and like you may not even be aware that you're doing it. But that's why they go hand in hand because in order for you to be honest, it's a lot easier when you're aware because if you aren't aware then you could be a thousand percent honest, honest with yourself. Yep. Uh, but you may not remember that. Oh, oh I did have this, or I yep. am doing those things, or uh, I, I am the garbage disposal for my family, or like whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. And so then the other part of the uh, the part of the honesty is okay. Like, well, uh, you ate two pieces of cake and you only tracked one piece of cake, or maybe you went out and you had a basket of fries and you recorded it as a, a small McDonald's fry. Like, so are you really being honest with what it is? And if or, you record it like that, huh. just, and you're, you're unhappy with your results, be aware that you're like, well, I'm kind of being a jackass with the way that I'm recording. Like, huh. or she was like, all right, I'm being a little loose. If I want to tighten things yeah. up, I need to tighten them up. And, and it's okay. Uh, and same thing, like she said, it could be, uh, you know, a slice of cake, but there's a difference between like, you know, uh, a homemade slice of cake that's like this big and going to a steakhouse <laughs> and getting one that's larger than your face. And so like, 
a slice isn't a slice and same thing with a slice of pizza like you can get a giant slice of pizza or you could have a little one and so uh being honest with yourself with that when you are tracking something don't pull it up uh, and pick the one that's like oh this looks good calorie wise pick the one that you are honest about it's like oh this is probably the closest to what i'm actually consuming yeah and then of course sustainability for the current time in your life so make sure that however you are measuring and tracking is sustainable um and is enjoyable and is something that um we'll say serves you and your goals okay so the next step on that is eyeballs and your eyeballs we are usually, this is usually how many of us start start out with uh, the way that we measure and track, right? Um, but eyeballs are great for when you don't have a scale. And it's really great to condition your eyeballs in tandem with your food scale. So for instance, if we're looking at this, you could even see, because if we're remembering that pyramid, you remember that there's like, there's cups, there's ounces, there's grams Volume ounces are very different than weighted ounces. So you can see, okay, one cup of this cooked brown rice looks about this. This is about how many grams it is. This is about how many ounces. So that when you do go out to a restaurant and they don't have nutrition facts or at a friend's house or whatever, you could be like, oh, that, that looks about like a cup of rice. That's where eyeballs can come into play. Yep. And when you do it, like obviously taking it, not necessarily a step further, but a step further is like on the scale of one thing, that's going to look very different on a plate or in a bowl or totally. whatever. So like uh, when you dump it on your plate, Take note, because like when it comes to a restaurant, it probably won't be in a fucking little like measuring cup. Um, and it won't probably may not be perfectly packed unless yeah. you're at a fancy restaurant. But yeah. like dump it on your plate and see what it looks like. And same thing that also helps. Or if you go to a friend's house or something like that, you can put it on your plate. Like, oh, this pile looks about the same as when I weighed out at the house. Yep. The next portion is the hand method, because guess what? I mean, most of us have two hands yep. um, and they are with us everywhere. And if you don't. We, we apologize. We uh, Hopefully you have one or you have some other appendage of your body that you can utilize to mm -hmm. um, gauge or you have really good eyeballs. Or a friend that's always with you and you can use their hand. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> your partner in crime. Yeah. Consistent though. It has to be the same. Person. This is true. Um, but basically the hand methods is great because you have your hand and you can use it, use it as a gauge. Very similar to, you probably heard where even people use like tennis balls, like, oh, like a half a cup is about a tennis ball, I think. Is it a tennis ball or a cup? Okay. I don't know. I, I haven't used that. that one yet. But I have seen like people where it's like, oh, like this size um, instrument is about this. So like if you're a sports person, maybe that helps you. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, so you look at it and it's like, okay, a closed fist is about a cup. And so what you can do is you can either like, that's just how you measure or you Take out a cup and you can compare it to your hand and see, all right, this this is my hand looks about, you know, a little less than a cup, a little more than a cup. Like, what does that look like? And also, uh, once again, this is something that's like it allows you to be consistent, not necessarily something you need to be legalistic about. So like if you do compare it to like an actual cup and it's like, oh, this is way off. What do I do now? Like, just realize, like we were saying before. Uh, finding a unit of measure that you can stick with. And so like, yes, everyone's hands are different sizes, but if I use my hands all the time, then that'll provide a consistent unit of measure. If she uses her hands all the time, same thing. Uh, and that's why it's something that's very beneficial because it allows you to be consistent because your hands don't vary in size uh, very often, like on your own hand, uh, but you're not going to be using someone else's. So it provides that consistent. Unless you ate a lot of sodium and then you're swollen. Yeah. Like... <laughs> uh, but it may not be that much bigger, right? It's just no. like turn into sausages, but the, 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 the overall size will be the same. This is true. Uh, and so it just allows you to have uh, something for a frame of reference without being too crazy. Yeah. And so even like you, maybe you've heard, you know, the whole protein serving where like, oh, you know, a, a cooked portion of protein is about three ounces, about this thick of your hand. Um, so like you can compare and see um, when you're at home, test it out, see how that works for you. The other next, the other stage on the pyramid is serving amounts. And so serving amounts are great. Like when you're at a friend. So for instance, like you, uh, maybe you had some chips or you had some cookies and guess what? Um, there are the serving amounts on those packaged foods. And so you could either say like, oh, like I had an entire bag of chips. Well, how many servings is the bag of chips? And then you're able to record like I had seven servings of chips. Um, it also works great for beers. It works great. So, yeah. yeah. It's like, all right, I had a this many cans. And I had this many cans. Um, how many cookies did I eat? Um, all of these different things, because then it gives you some way to measure and track. This 
is one of our favorite things to do, and it's to the explore grocery stores. And when we explore these grocery stores, we read labels because on these labels, it gives you serving sizes, which is incredibly helpful when you don't have foods with facts. Um, and it can just give you that visual element, very uh, similar to what we were talking about with the eyeballs earlier, is conditioning those eyeballs of like, all right, this is about three ounces of whatever. Um, and so we even found this. So they had crispy potato corn dogs at mm. Costco, um, but they're the they're these new fad Korean hot dogs. But back in the day, two hands they did not have nutrition facts. Now I was able to kind of search and see, and they had some nutrition facts. And there was another one I was able to find. This is where Google's your friend. But anyways, what I'm saying here is you will find all types of crazy foods in the frozen food section, in the bakery section. They all have nutrition facts on there. And they on there, it says, okay, like this is a three ounce uh, corn dog. And then this is the amount of calories and what, whatever. So that when you do go to a place without nutrition facts, you could be like, oh, did I eat one serving? Did I, which was about three ounces? Did I eat a little more than that? Did I eat a little less than that? And, and this it, is where it all starts to kind of blend together. So yeah. Because it's like, oh, cool. Like, um, Maybe you don't know what a three ounce serving looks like, but if you've been measuring and tracking, then you start to get like, oh, like this is probably about three ounces. Um, and then you see something that's packaged and they say, oh, it's a three ounce serving. And you look at it and you're like, oh man, the one that I got from two hands is way bigger <laughs> yeah. than that. So like that was probably a like six ounce serving or like maybe a little bit more than three, but you kind of start to put it all together. So that way like, when you look at it, it's kind of like, you know, Neo with a matrix and you can start to see the yeah. how it all comes together. <laughs> Exactly. We even found this smoked beef rib. So there's a smoked beef rib at the grocery store that we went to. Hey, it's Texas. Mm -hmm. um, so that way, because like, I will tell you right now, you go to a barbecue spot, there are no nutrition facts on a beef rib. Yeah. And if you ask them, like, you know, you don't want to know. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, exactly. Well, it's like, you know, that, that's not why people come get barbecue. Right? Yeah. Um, but even uh, I think like Dickies, they don't do beef ribs, but there is a barbecue spot out here that uh, is at the grocery stores and they do have nutrition facts, but oh. they don't say the weight of the rib. So you can ask them and say, what is your typical, you know, weight of your ribs? So that way, you know, like, oh, I had about half of a rib or I had X, Y, Z. Or if you find something in, in the package section, that's like, okay, well, uh, I know that a four ounce serving of a beef rib is this. Mm -hmm. How much did I eat when I went out? Yep. And then you go and you get a beef rib, you realize they're all about a pound. You're like, holy bejesus. That's not <laughs> it is. It really is. But it's so good. Um, and then of course you have like restaurants without nutrition facts. So for instance, um, if you, you know, got a key lime pie and you're like, I have which no we idea, which we, we did, this is an actual picture, actual footage. Mm -hmm. Um, Edwards, Edwards is a frozen pie slice. So they have like, did I have one slice of pie, which is a little over three ounces? Um, did I have a little less? Did I have a little bit more? So it gives you that gauge. And oftentimes you can ask the restaurant like, oh, do you know about like how big your pie is or whatever? And even the what you see above here, that's the Fogo de Chao nutrition facts. And so on there is they only put the calories, but they say that their key lime pie is 8.5 ounces. And so in other lessons, you could technically blend the two, but you can see, all right, an eight and a half... Uh, ounce key lime pie is 840 calories about so yeah. did I have um if this uh 8.5 ounce key lime pie did I eat the whole thing did I eat half of the thing what did I eat just gives you those gauges yeah. same well, thing and all of this like it seems like a lot but the reality is like take it one step at a time and like we we're saying they all kind of build on each other and so yep. this is a skill that realistically like um, you'll you'll be developing for the rest of your life when you do it in small steps it doesn't feel overwhelming uh so it's just like be forgiving or, you know, like passionate on yourself when it's like, all right, cool. Like maybe this does seem a lot. I'm just going to take it one thing at a time. I'll get better and better. And you'll be able to start to put all of these things together. Yeah. Like there's so much information out there and that's where that sustainability factor comes into play. Mm -hmm. So sample calamari yard house has all types of nutrition facts in there. How much calamari did I eat? A serving worth, half a serving worth, X, Y, Z. All of the, all of the servings. Yeah. Um, it's on the bottom of the plate. All right. Measuring cups. So as you know, volume is very different than weight. We were touching upon this before. Yeah, turn it up. So if we look at this, like I know we got a lot of sad, uh, sad, sad campers out there because one tablespoon of weighted peanut butter is very different than what we scoop out. 
And so once again, reconditioning those eyeballs of like, okay, this is an actual serving of it. Um, but measuring cups are also great. Like when you are using very small measurements, because let's be real, if you are baking and you're trying to measure on a scale, one eighth of a teaspoon, I'm going to tell you right now, it is not going to measure out. So just use your darn <laughs> measuring cups. Otherwise you're going to be pissed. But once again, that's where the consistency comes into yeah. play. It's like, all right, cool. When I, when I'm measuring these things, this is how I typically do them. Cause like she was saying, like you can put, try to put them on a digital scale and it's just, yep won't add it it does it happens um but measuring cups are also great when you when um you are measuring something or you're unfamiliar with like the food weights or the sizes so for instance like maybe you go out for ice cream um popcorn we don't eat a lot of popcorn so i'm like oh i don't know like I, maybe i eat about like a cup of popcorn um certain vegetables certain carbs uh if you take a look at some of the nutrition facts on like ice creams like they'll tell you like okay this is the weight of two thirds of a cup of this ice cream. And so when you go out for ice cream, you're like, huh, does that look about like two thirds of a cup? Does that look about like a half a cup? But then you have to be careful because depending on what's inside the ice cream, then you have wildly different measurements for the same serving size. This right? is So it's like a yeah. oh, half a cup and it's like one's, you know, 60 grams, one's uh, 125. How's that? How's that possible? Yeah. Because one's loaded with brownies and cookies and syrups and other things. Yes. And so that's where it's like, okay, like I'll just use the cups, but like Brewster's, they are a uh, chain restaurant. They're actually really good. Mm -hmm. um, and they have nutrition facts and they even tell you, so you can look at their main menu and it's like, okay, like a small waffle cone comes with two scoops of ice cream. And if I look at this, the far, this one down, um, that's a small waffle cone uh, that weighs, it's apparently it comes in at 170 grams and is around 460 calories. So it just gives you that frame of reference. Then we got our ounces, which is the bigger version of grams, but they're not as detailed. So give them the person scale example. Yep. <laughs> so it's like, uh, I, yeah, I don't know if you guys have, I'm sure most of you guys have a digital person scale or for your body weight. Uh, but if you were to step on the scale and you didn't have the digital one that read like, uh, you know, two pounds and like all of the fractional weights, um, make it seem like it's a very long journey from pound to pound, right? Seeing all the fractional things in between makes all the difference in the world. And that's the same thing with ounces and grams. Ounces would be like uh, your your pounds and then the fractional weights in between each pound uh, would be like the grams. And so I know like for us, when we're on this journey, sometimes when you're fighting to make results, you like to see it go down like, fractions of a pound each week um because same thing like you could be fighting for this and you lose half a pound a week but if your scale doesn't measure in half pounds you could feel like you're stuck for weeks months years or whatever or just feel like oh man it took me you know an entire two months to lose a single pound it's like you're making progress the whole way you just didn't see it yep um, but ounces are great when you're unfamiliar once again with certain foods and you're learning to convert because i know a lot of us americans like we're familiar with cups, we're familiar with ounces, but when it comes to grams and mLs, you're like, what the fuck? Um, so like, for instance, like liquid measurements, you know, you go out and I don't know how many mLs of wine I have, but I know that I'll have like a six ounce glass of wine. So then I know that I can measure uh, six ounces or track six ounces of wine. Same thing, like when you go to steak restaurants, they're probably not going to tell you the gram amount, um, but they'll tell you, oh, you get a 12 ounce T-bone steak or an eight ounce filet. And so then and that's it, why you're hoping for more. <laughs> so hopefully but it, it's like 10.9 yeah, ounces. Yeah. But, it, but it gives you that, that frame of reference and a way to actually track it, um, especially when you don't have uh, things that have nutrition facts. Of course, grams is the most precise as you can be. And if you're going to actually be at home and measuring something uh, and you're using a scale, then you might as well be as precise as possible if you're going to use the scale. Um, but once again, sustainability is where that key factor comes into play. And this picture is a great depiction of like one tomatoes can be very different, right? And that's where, yeah. like, oh, like a slice of cake or this, that, whatever. So like measuring by piece can be great. But be honest with what your pieces look like. Was it a small tomato? Was it a grape tomato? Was it an heirloom tomato? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so basically focus on being consistent, being honest and aware of how you're actually measuring and tracking, uh, doing what is sustainable for you. And of course, adjusting your method as needed for your life and your goals. But in conclusion, you're going to, you're always measuring to some degree, always. Uh, be aware, honest, and consistent in the way that you measure and track. 
Don't be afraid to learn new methods and master new foods and techniques because this is a lifelong journey and what worked in the past may not work for you now or work for you in the future and vice versa. And the, the more tools you have in your tool belt, the easier it is um, for success long-term. Cause like sometimes there's learning those new methods, techniques, all those things, trying out new foods, uh, exploring the grocery store, just add, adds to your tool belt. So it makes it really easy as you move forward. Yep. So just your method as needed for your life and your goals. And then of course, if you have any questions, submit a burning question or apply for a breakthrough session.